chairperson KNC Chad that's the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights good Absolutely. morning Karibu sana thank you for having me in the studio excellent a lot's happening in the NGO world I know uh, KNC Chad may not have been directly affected by this but uh, quite a number of human rights groups uh, groups like Kurangu South Yang KHRC which is quite often confused with KNC yeah, yeah. is also affected in this um, and I have with me that letter from uh, the NGO's coordination board. I'm sure you've looked at it. Yeah. Then what are the merits of some of these things? Because some of them look like, yes, it could be an attempt to regulate the NGO world, but uh, is that just that face value? Could we say that? Fred, I, I think um, you're spot on by saying that a lot is happening and has been happening, especially within the NGO sector and all this is led by none other than one Fazul Muhammad uh, who seems to be operating as if he were a law unto himself. The issues that he's bringing forward are not, uh, this is not the first time he's bringing these issues forward. Mm -hmm. We know what happened sometimes in August this year. We saw the siege that was laid at the AFRICOG offices, mm -hmm. um, the harassment that was directed at the Kenya Human Rights Commission and all that. So I, I don't think this should be interpreted within the context of an NGO board that is keen on regulating the sector. Mm -hmm. But what has come out clearly over time is that this, um, if, if I will use this word, and I'm actually not afraid to use the word here, mm -hmm. uh, Fazul has resorted to what can qualify as guerrilla tactics. He is engaged in some playful destruction of a very critical sector in this country, and I think it's time we put a stop to Fazul's playful destructiveness to this very vital sector. If it's an issue of regulation, mm -hmm. we as a commission have been in the forefront with the other actors asking the government to operationalize the Public Benefits Organization Act that was assented to by the former president Mwai Kibaki in January 2013. That has happened. Yes. That has not happened to now. And that act provides a very robust framework which will put to a stop what we are seeing currently being perpetrated by Fazul. Okay. Now, if I look, uh, looking at the media, and uh, it's covered uh, this story in uh, the standard on page four, states, uh, state cracks down on civil society. Uh, on page five of the Daily Nation, on a summons by Fazul and Joe Stolt. Uh, the media uh, seems to suggest that this was an attempt to try and block the civil society groups from filing that election, uh, presidential election petition. Uh, before the midnight deadline yesterday, uh, we saw in John Jomue, uh, Hilo Khalifa, who are members of the civil society, finally managing to uh, file the petitions, but they file these petitions as individuals. Uh, does it mean that this attempt or this uh, crackdown by uh, Fazul Mohammed actually worked? No, I, I don't think that the crackdown, if we want to call it that way, by Fazul Mohammed uh, worked. Uh, Fred, this is a country that is governed by the rule of law. Our constitution allows organizations, individuals to approach our courts of law as neutral and impartial arbiters to whatever dispute mm -hmm. we have in society. So if indeed it's true that these attempts have been uh, indicated elsewhere by Fazul were meant to stop either John Jomwe or Khalifa uh, Khalif, uh, going to court, then we should be very worried because as a country we are trying to criminalize the citizens' legitimate avenue. Yes for uh, uh, addressing a dispute. So I, I would shudder to imagine that indeed Fazul is actually doing this or is doing this so that he stops them or any other citizen yes. for that matter. Because going to the reason I'm saying this is uh, even in this letter he's quoted Fazul Mohammed uh, cites Kurayangu Sautiangu and We the People. Yes. We the People is an umbrella uh, of yes. a Kurayangu Kurayangu and they had indicated uh, an intent to actually go to court and file a petition against the repeat presidential election of October 26th by a midnight, we did not see we the people going to court. Instead, we see John Jomue and Hala Falifa as two individuals going to court. Uh, are you saying that this push by the NGO Coordination Board did not work? We should have seen we the people in court yesterday. Well, we don't know whether we the people or Kurayangu Sautiangu had actually intended to go to court, so we cannot speculate on that basis. They had indicated that they would challenge it in court. Oh, um, I, I don't know whether they indicated, but what I'm trying to say is this. Whether Kuyangu, Sautiango, or we the people indicated that they were going to court, they should not be criminalized for that. Nobody should criminalize them for doing that. And who is Kurayangu Sautiangu? The last I checked, Kurayangu Sautiangu is actually a citizens-led coalition made up of about 15 or so 
civil society organizations all registered under different regimes organizations like the one that uh, Fazul is going after now mm -hmm. Katiba Institute and Inuka uh, don't even fall within the purview of the NGO coordination board because they're not NGOs per se they've been registered either as companies limited by guarantee or trust so Fazul is clearly overstepping and I'm, what I'm saying is no Kenyan with the people acting either as we the people or Kurayangu Sautiangu or as Njonjo Mue or uh, Helef mm -hmm. should actually be criminalized for doing the right thing. If that is the attitude and the approach that is emanating from a very critical office that is domiciled within the office of the president, what message are we sending to Kenyans? Mm -hmm. Are we telling Kenyans if you have disputes, if you don't agree with certain um, um, uh, political, social, or economic disputes, then you, 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 you shouldn't um, we seek recourse in our courts of yes. law. What message are we sending yeah. out? In fact, if indeed it's true that um, the motivation behind this was to stop these organizations from going to court, then I will not hesitate to term Fazul as a threat to our constitutional democracy and our rule of law. Now, this is not the first time this is happening. You mentioned yes. correctly a few months back, Africa, the only factor on Africa, KNCHR. Uh, but uh, the CS for Interior came out with a remedy. I uh, think there was a committee set up to look into those matters. Has that been handled conclusively? If you just allow me very quickly to just give you a little bit of a background to all this matter. This matter started with the CS. Uh, for devolution and planning, uh, Mr. Mwangi Kyunjuri, sometimes in September last year. Mm -hmm. At that time, he had made very progressive steps towards operationalizing the PBO Act. In fact, he went ahead and suggested and indicated very strongly that he was going to issue a commencement date. Before that could happen, sometimes in October uh, um, last year, yes. there was a directive from the, uh, the presidency that the functions or this uh, branch of government, the NGO Coordination Board, had been transferred mm -hmm. to the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government. Well, those ones who are interested in regulating this sector did not stop at that. So people moved to court and we came in as Kenya Nationals, Amicus Curiae, and on 31st of October 2016, the court then under Justice Onguto directed that uh, the CS, uh, Devolution and Planning, gives a commencement date within two weeks, 14 days. Mm -hmm. That did not happen because then the CSA, that those functions had been moved to Interior and Coordination, uh, Minister of, uh, Interior and Coordination of National Government. That did not stop again the actors in this sector going back to court. And they went back to court uh, on May this year, 2017. Mm -hmm. And from that uh, uh, appearance in court, Justice Mativo directed that indeed Although the CS Interior and Devolution and the CS Coordination of National Government had, uh, had said that the Interior and Coordination of Government had said that this matter had been moved to his docket and therefore he wasn't in a position to implement it, the court came up with fresh directives mm -hmm. that were given on 12th of May saying, okay, if that is all you wanted for us to give you the directions to implement this PBO Act, then we are going to give you that leeway. The court ordered the Minister of Interior and Coordination of National Government on 12th of May this year to commence the PBO Act 30 days. Mm -hmm. That period lapsed in June 2017. The PBO Act has not been operationalized. Fred, what my fear is is this. Who is the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government? Mm -hmm. These are supposed to be the custodians of the rule of law. In fact, the National Police Service, the Director of uh, Criminal Investigations and all this are housed under this very critical ministry. Yes. So what are you telling Kenya? Are you this saying, ministry, are you saying, are you saying uh, the, the people... There is no uh, movement that has been made. The, people, the people cited in this letter uh, have no uh, pl uh, place where they can seek uh, redress? Well, it looks like when they have gone to court and the court has pronounced itself twice on this matter, the first time on, August, uh, on October 31st, 2016, and the second time on May uh, 12, 2017, directing and giving express mm -hmm. orders, first to the Ministry of Planning, uh, and devolution, and then second to the Minister of National Coordination, uh, uh, to the Minister of Interior National Coordination, giving the very express directions to operationalize the PBO Act. That hasn't happened. What message are we sending if we're saying we are a country governed by the rule of law? And this Minister of Interior and Coordination of National Government, I'm wondering why the CS Matiangi is actually sitting and watching these things happening under his watch. It is correct that you say that he tried to bring some sanity. I remember sometimes in August, after the mm -hmm. attack on Africa and KH, KH, KHRC, KHRC, he ordered that there should be a bipartisan um, um, team to look into this matter. 
it is high time that this happened because the two it ministries to stand, it hasn't happened the two ministries stand in contempt of a court directive mm -hmm. and that is very dangerous for the rule of law yes. and that is something that shouldn't happen Matiangi is known to be a person who goes to places and streamlines those places he has streamlined the education sector we expect him to streamline the NGO sector and mm -hmm. the very robust framework okay. in fact Fazul has gone rogue Fazula is going rogue under the watch of C.S. Matiangi, and C.S. Matiangi has a responsibility and owes it yes. to the citizens of this country to regulate the PBO uh, uh, sector. Finally, these NGOs yesterday spoke to the media and they said they will not honor those summons by uh, Fazul Mohammed. Do you agree with them? Uh, let me put what they said in context because, again, if the arbiter, the courts have said, are given very explicit directions and those ones are being flagrantly disregarded and dishonored, by the same uh, government that's actually now ordering them to appear before them on the same issues that have been canvassed in the past, then I see their frustration and challenge. Fred, nowhere before in this country have we actually witnessed what we're witnessing now. Even during the height of the so-called single-party dictatorship, the Kenya Human Rights Commission was functioning. It play, played a very key role in creating the democratic space that this country enjoys. They released political prisoners pressure group that was very instrumental in releasing Kenya's prisoners of conscience was allowed to function. There was no crackdown or attempts to close the civic space. It is an irony that when we have a new constitution that we passed that supposed to safeguard our freedom of association and assembly under Article 36, these continuous petty harassments should be coming as they, uh, they are continuously doing from the office of Fazul. Mm -hmm. So I think he's, he's engaged in what, what I would call a war of attrition without any substance on the allegation that he's making on these NGOs. Finally, a uh, headline on page 5 of the Daily Nation. Uh, the National Council of NGOs Chairman Stephen Chiboy has called on the officials to honor the summons and appear before the committee in line with the values of the umbrella body, which are transparency, probity, accountability, justice and good governance. What do you say to that? One of the biggest problems we have in this country is actually even the structure of that NGO council itself because it doesn't have legitimacy across the board. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was better when the NGO council was headed by very strong men and women who believed in this sector, people like Muta Mutaza Jaffa, people like uh, Elkana Odembo, but continuously and progressively the NGO uh, council is now an, a shell of its former uh, uh, um, past. And what we have now is an NGO council that does not speak adequately for all the NGOs across the board, mm -hmm. which is something that should have been cured mm -hmm. by the operationalization of the Public Benefits Organization Act. So I hear what uh, my good friend Chebo is trying to say, but within the broad sector, uh, uh, the NGO sector again, the NGO council has not uh, gained the credibility and acceptability across the board mm -hmm. for it to be issuing those kinds of directives okay. to the NGO. Thank you, George Morala, Deputy Chairperson, KNC Chala, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, talking to us on Power Breakfast News. Safaricom dealers have condemned NASA's call for the boycott of the Telco's products, saying about a million people who depend on the company for their livelihoods could be left destitute. But hours after the dealers spoke, and NASA leader Arlo Dinga and several opposition politicians dumped their Safaricom lines for Airtel. And as Mumbi Waroi reports, the leaders insist the boycott is justified. Following the National Super Alliance Party's call to its supporters to boycott products from Safaricom, Bitco and Brookside for alleged association with the Jubilee Party, dealers in Safaricom products say they expect huge losses and joblessness going forward. Boycotting Safaricom means that this association cannot provide you with telecommunication services and more than one million people will lose their jobs immediately. Already there are too many of us Kenyans who are unemployed. A small person that I have employed down Kisumu or Bodo or Nyeri or Makweni, she is actually telling me as her CEO the commission you are paying me is much lower than what it was. According to Safaricom's True Value Report 2017 by audit firm KPMG, the telco has employed over 900,000 people, both directly and indirectly. The beneficiaries putting bread on the table for many more Kenyans. Despite the businessmen being unable to quantify the losses incurred so far, they claim their agents in some parts of the country are facing intimidation, making their day-to-day -day activities impossible. We've got reports that uh, around Homer Bay County area, 
we've had people being threatened and even going to an extent of physically harming them. <laughs> Joining in on the boycott, NASA leader Raila Odinga and several other opposition politicians dumped their Safaricom lines for Airtel. His co-principal Musalia Mudavadi defended the coalition against concerns that the boycott would leave many Kenyans destitute, saying revenues were simply being transferred to companies that had not subverted democracy. Everybody who does business here, let us all seek fairness, because when fairness is practiced, when justice is practiced, everybody benefits. But when certain institutions are seen to have assisted a process uh, that has taken away the will of the people, then it's important that a message gets to them. NASA leaders claim that Safaricom colluded with the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission to tamper with the results of the August 8th polls. Jerry Moko, uh, board member of Safaricom Dealers Association, now joins us in studio for this discussion. Good morning, Karibu Sana. Thank you so much, Fred. Yes, when you talk about Safaricom Dealers Association, who are you talking about? I'm talking about over 400 Safaricom dealers and uh, 4,000 investor agents mm -hmm. who came together in 2004 to champion the challenges that are facing our agencies and dealers. Okay, so the boycott has lasted about uh, two, three, four days or so. Uh, what kind of losses are we looking at on a daily basis? Well, at the moment we may not be in a position to quantify in terms of figures the exact uh, percentage that has been lost so far. But uh, going forward, if you look at what is happening in some of these regions, uh, tentatively we are going to lose quite um, a lot. So the problem uh, is going forward, but uh, currently not much damage has been done. Is that what you're saying? Not, not really, because uh, going by what we saw last week on Friday in some place around Homer Bay County, mm -hmm. threats have already been issued, and uh, we've had these people physically being harmed and their products being confiscated by the same people I would call in quotes hooligans. Mm -hmm. oh, when you say threats, uh, what kind of threats are you talking about? Because they were told to leave the place mm -hmm. and uh, go by what Baba said. Mm -hmm so that now they can switch off to the other competitors. Uh, uh, are you saying that uh, this has affected the numbers in that region that you've been handling? And by numbers I'm talking about in PESA uh, numbers and uh, the number of calls, the number of lines you get to sell for in that region? Absolutely, yes. Uh, the collectivity of our lines has gone down a bit and in PESA transactions are equally going down in those specific regions. It's a cause for concern for all of us as a nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought it wise as an organization to really come to our immediate defense over this matter, given the fact that uh, this economy is for all of us. Mm -hmm. And we all need to grow it together. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure you mu must have done a, uh, some bit of calculation. You say going forward, if, if it continues, let's say, for the next. Uh, two weeks or for the next one month. You must have done a, a, a sort of estimate uh, mm -hmm. that uh, this is a kind of loss mm -hmm. we are staring at. Perhaps we may be looking at an average of say 20 to 30 percent loss. Mm -hmm. Yes. In terms of, in, in terms of uh, capital, business capital? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Revenues mm -hmm. in that line. Yes. Uh, you say 250,000 um, members are in uh, the association, 250,000 members. Out of this, about how many, what percentage have been affected? Well, um, the members of the association in terms of MPS agency is over 4,000. Mm -hmm. But the 250,000 are the people who are doing their daily business through MPS. Mm -hmm. Those people who have the candy shops are the ones who we talk about here. And if you look at them across the country, this is their lifeline. And if you tell them not to use M-Pesa today, do you have an alternative for them? Mm -hmm. And that alternative that you may say you have, does it have the capacity to take care of all these people? I will confidently tell you that it is not possible. And therefore we need to exercise sobriety and let wisdom also prevail upon our leaders yes. so that we have this country back on track. We need to grow economy. We do not need to generate into what we are seeing today. Yes. 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 Now, your members are, are uh, spread out across the country. Absolutely. Uh, which areas would you say are the most affected by this boycott? At 
at the moment we are seeing Nyanza region and uh, Western mm -hmm. who have taken this call very seriously and uh, that is why we are coming out very strongly that uh, this needs to really stop mm -hmm. and we are asking them to kindly seek for other ways of dealing with the political problem that they have yes yes uh, there the, the are also areas which uh have been known to support NASA as well away from Nyanza and Western we're talking about Okambani in Eastern and the coast region uh, how much of an effect has this boycott had on new businesses in these two regions that's Eastern Okambani area and the coast as we speak there isn't much of an impact in those particular regions and we only hope that um, as I said earlier sanity will prevail and people will have the voice of reason mm -hmm. taking center stage Yep. so that what is seen in these other regions perceived to be NASA strongholds can also emulate what the other, I mean the other guys from those strongholds are doing so that uh, in this other side of Kenya that is Nyanza and Western mm -hmm. can also see the sense in really doing business like the rest of the country is doing. Okay. Jerry Moko, official uh, board member of Safaricom Dealers Association, talking to us about the boycott on Safaricom products as called by NASA to its supporters. Parliament resumes its sittings tomorrow amid uncertainty of a constitution of House leadership committees following delays in the filing of slots reserved for the opposition. One of the MPs' immediate talks is a formation, a task rather, is a formation of a committee that will eventually vet cabinet nominees once disputes related to the repeat presidential election are resolved. Stephen Leto reports. The bicameral parliament resume its sittings tomorrow after a one month recess, majorly triggered by the presidential repeat poll concluded last week. Assumption of business by the Senate and the National Assembly comes amid pending house business that must be resolved with no delay. For instance, in the National Assembly, top on its agenda is appointment of members to sit in the selection committee. The committee is in readiness for the voting of cabinet nominees should there be changes in the current cabinet as well as other executive appointments. Already Kiambu Town Member of Parliament Jude Njomo has presented a notice of motion to Parliament seeking to have the formation of the Constitution Implementation and Oversight Committee CIOC to audit the current Constitution and give recommendations within 60 days. In the Senate, Speaker Kenneth Lusaka told Citizen TV it was all systems go and the Senate is bracing up for a busy period that will entail reviewing of several legislations relating to devolution, including reintroducing debate on a special kitty for senators in aid of their oversight work. That's why we're saying that, you know, we need, and I'm appealing to the Senate, that we need to come back to the House and, and start business. So those are some of the issues that we need to start talking about. For example, how do we empower the senators to be able to carry out their work? Actually, they need to empower the senators to be able to carry out their oversight work. <laughs> It is, however, the opposition's failure to present names to take up leadership position in both houses that continues to stall the parliamentary business. Sources have intimated that NASA has requested the House speakers to allow them until 30th of November. Because as it is now, the leader of majority is shouldering everything. is like the one who is responding to, to all the petitions, the, um, the statements that come and, and, and all that. So I'll be appealing to the leadership of uh, uh, NASA to be able to provide us with the leadership so that we are able to move. So that's going to be priority number one. Also pending in Parliament is filling vacant positions in the Parliamentary Service Commission. Stephen Latour, Citizen TV, Nairobi. Yes, that report by Stephen Latour regarding Parliament resuming today. And NASA MPs saying they will stay away from parliamentary seatings. Back to the issue of boycotting Safaricom products. The dailies today have also covered this story on page 6 of the Daily Nation. Safaricom dealers plead to NASA traders and court to say opposition call to boycott products from three firms will lead to job losses. I'm talking about the number of small outlets engaged in impressive business countrywide amounting to 250,000, 400 in the number of companies engaged as dealers of the mobile money transfer business. On the standard, Mudavadi says, this page 9 of the standard, Mudavadi says products boycott is not business witch hunt. NASA has defended its move of value in Kenya to boycott products and services of three major companies 
and it's uh, Mudavadi Musale Mudavadi says it is only uh, it's only seeking to make Kenyans aware of electoral injustices as the coalition prepares to name more companies. Yes, those are the headlines this morning. Time now for a break.